Hello, Tima Nova. Welcome to the M3 Minutes podcast room. Thank you for taking the time out for us today. So I'm going to just, let's just kick it off. And can you start by introducing yourself and giving us an overview of Anova Payroll and its services? And ladies first, Mary. Oh, I was going to let Tim go first, but I'm happy to go first. <laughs> I'm Mary Leverage. I'm the uh, the executive vice president at Anova Payroll. Um, I actually head up the HR outsourcing division, and um, we do everything from helping a client manage their HR technology to helping them with HR uh, employee issues. Um, you know, so we really get more intimately involved with the client than a typical payroll provider would. Um, Tim can tell you a little bit about the overall uh, services of, a- of ANOVA, probably a little bit better. I'm Tim Humanick. I'm a senior consultant with ANOVA Payroll. We have full suite software, everything from hire to retire, applicant tracking, onboarding, payroll, um, benefits administration, the full suite. And then we have additional capabilities uh, that a lot of our customers take advantage of, like healthcare benefits, uh, e-verify, employment verification, the HR solution that Mary's team's head up. And a lot of our customers take advantage of those capabilities. And they are all the better for doing so. I <laughs> must agree. You all have been our longest running partner, and we certainly appreciate you all being there for our customers and taking excellent care of them. So let's just dive right in and just talk about um, you know, challenges, pitfalls, all that kind of good stuff, as well as all the good stuff, is how you guys can help them avoid those things. So let's start off with what are some common challenges companies face with payroll and HR when selling or acquiring new properties? Yeah. Well, I can I could jump in and answer that. Um, you know, it's funny because uh, every company that 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 has to acquire a property or has to acquire a, a, another, a, does a merger, um, they face the same challenges. They're a little bit different with the hospitality industry because number one, you have two groups of, of employees you're trying to merge and you may have overlapping roles. You may have people who uh, are areas that are understaffed and that's the same in any industry. But what's unique about the hospitality industry is you may have to do that in three days. You don't have time to go do the due diligence to see, okay, what is this uh, employee's ex- uh, experience level? What is this employee's knowledge uh, or capabilities? Um, so you may end up getting in there and saying, okay, I've got two payroll administrators. I've got two HR directors. Do we need to get rid of this person? Do we need to hire for this role? So that's unique in itself, um, but that's something your internal team has to has to deal with. Um, on top of that, you also have the, the problem that you have to onboard sometimes 100 people in two days. So now you've got a team internally that's trying to manage all the inner workings of this new property. And then they also have to go on site and onboard 100 people. And, you know, you don't you don't want to staff up for something that happens once a year. So all of a sudden you have like a, a situation where you have to like put all your people in a position to manage this big onboarding process. So that's a big challenge when you're trying to, to take over a property for sure. Wow. That is a lot to keep up with. And thank you for um, all of that information. Just kind of um, diving further into that. Can you share some examples of pitfalls that our customers should avoid uh, during these transitions? Well, you know, if you if you think about it, the, the worst thing that, that you can do is something that you really don't have a lot of control over in this in this uh, industry is and that's rushing the process. So if you're about to take over any if you're about to do a merger or an acquisition, you don't want to rush that and not have a timeline thought out. Unfortunately, in this industry, you may not have a, a set timeline because it changes all the time depending on this property group, that property group, uh, you know, whatever the, the different thing nuances are going on behind the scenes. So you don't want to rush that process, but you still have to, you have to be fl- flexible. So what I would suggest and highly recommend is that whatever that timeline is that you know, you need to make sure your vendors know that too. Keep them in the loop. Um, make sure they have whatever information you have, even even if it's not all the information. 
So I would rather have, if I'm responsible for that on, onboarding, I would rather have a list of 100 employees today and then when you onboard them know that five have been terminated than getting 95 on the day we're trying to onboard. So, uh, so it's really good to keep a vendor with you that understands the process and make sure that you keep them in the loop. The other p uh, pitfall is not having enough people allocated to that onboarding process. Um, and again, that kind of goes back to the struggle of you can't hire 10 people because you think you're going to onboard one property that year. So uh, that's where our team can come into play. We can help manage that, help get people on site if necessary. Um, my team, you know, we, we, a lot of our clients subscribe to that service because they can't staff for that all year long. So, so your team will actually go on site and guide people through this yeah. process if needed. Yeah. Um, especially if, if, if they subscribe to our HR outsourcing sure. team. And the other thing that's very interesting about that is, um, you know, what we've seen now is when we go to these hotels, um, 75 percent of your people speak Spanish and they don't speak any English so we have bilingual employees that go with us and can help with that communication barrier so it's very helpful and, and it totally relieves the stress from your team the owner's team um, who may not have the c capability or the knowledge or even the time to do those things that is fantastic you guys have figured out how to make this how to hit the easy button for your Meh. customers that is awesome so what are the essential steps a company should follow to ensure a smooth payroll and hr transition when acquiring a new property well is it a number of, of things that that you want to do first you want to make sure um, that you have the right support staff payroll system in place and the people uh, behind that then you need a plan to make sure that you have access to the data of the employees, the demographic data of the employees that you're going to be onboarding. Uh, the best case would be an access login to their current system so we can take that information and download it. Sure. Uh, companies that are selling properties are not necessarily going to allow you a login and password to their system. They want to protect their information. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a, a plan for that. You're going to need a plan to be able to onboard those people in your system, as Mary discussed, uh, with the bilingual uh, item, for example. We can be on site for that. And you need to have a plan on how are you going to handle the benefits of these people are they used to having health care benefits, a 401k plan, those type of items. And, and we can help with those. And, and for those people who haven't looked at a 401k, for example, for a while, there's a, a relatively new product called pooled employer plans that are much less expensive and erroneous on companies uh, from an administration administrative point of view that they can now offer 401k to their employees. So those are the type of things that we can help with. Be proactive, not reactive. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So um, forward looking when a customer knows that something, you know, they're looking at making a change, how early should a company start planning for these transitions to avoid disruptions? Because payroll is the last thing you want to disrupt. You don't want any, any <laughs> there. <clears throat> That's a great question. Bring us in as early as possible. We don't charge for you to bring us in during the due diligence process so we can help understand what the challenges are and bring the right uh, resources to bear for you. If there's a, a many more things such as uh, carrier connections that you need, 401k integrations, we'd like to have two months or so. Um, with that said though, uh, we don't often have that much time. And if you're a current customer, we've gotten these set up in as little as a couple days if you really have to push in that manner. I think I just had one of those, hey, can we uh, can we get this done like <laughs> yesterday? And you guys were so agreeable. Y'all were on it immediately. And I think we actually made it happen. So that was wonderful. Great. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about technology, uh, compliance, regulations, all that fun stuff. So what technology considerations should be taken into account during the acquisition or sale of properties? Well, you know, you want to make sure that your vendor uh, has a software that's compatible with your existing systems. Um, and if you have multiple vendors, it's great if they're compatible with each other, which, uh, as you know, Inova and M3, we have great integration capabilities. Um, the systems talk to each other. That makes the whole process much more seamless for a client. Um, and then, you know... Uh, not just for the employees because they're logging into one system, um, but then for your internal uh, people who are managing the data, 
um, they really get the information from the system into their general ledger accounting, um, into their financial software. So having all these uh, all these systems talk to each other just makes the whole process much more seamless. So you want to make sure you ask those questions: what's compatible with hot with what, um, and then you know making sure that that the, uh, the the employees can access it and they have a one stop shop for all these things. They don't have to sign into this to get that information. They don't have to sign into this. And then again, for the hospitality industry, what's so critical is having a vendor that uh, their technology is already prepared to bring you on board. So um, one of the things that we've done a great job with within three is creating our templates. So uh, when you start with us, you're not, not starting from ground zero. We already have a cost center structure set up. We already know what those jobs are. We already know that this is an exempt employee and this is a non-exempt employee. Um, so you're not really... Uh, having to feed us, spoon feed us information. It just makes the whole process go quicker and smoother. So it's really nice. And I hear more and more from my customers. They want seamlessness. They want, you know, it may be two solutions, but they don't want it to feel like it's exactly. two solutions. And we have really perfected that uh, working together with our solutions. Um, so talk to me, uh, because another thing that is I hear a lot about is compliance. How are you guys making sure that, you know, you're up to date on regulations and all this good stuff um, that scares me, um, as it does a lot of people, uh, and I get it. Um, how can companies ensure that they remain compliant with HR regulations during these transitions? Well, you know, um, one thing I'll tell you, every client is different. So I can onboard, you know, 10 clients in one year, and I may have this client who knows everything about Colorado, and I may have this one client who knows everything about Ohio. So I don't know whether they know or not. So one of the things that you have to be sure of is communicate with your vendor. Tell them, I don't, I've never worked in Ohio before. Is there something I need to be aware of? So tell us and we can tell you. Otherwise, we're probably going to assume that you know what you need to know, um, especially if you have another property in that same state. Um, so leveraging your vendor knowledge is critical, but also keeping that line of communication open with the vendor. So you're letting them know what you need from them. Um, because we may or may not know other properties that you have. So, and the worst thing in the world is to have someone who's in Washington and uh, having us try to tell you information you already know, because that's, that's a waste of your time. So we're going to assume sometimes that you know the nuances of that state. So just communicate. For sure, for sure. Um, what are some key compliance issues that companies need to be aware of, particularly with state and local taxes? Ugh. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> well, every every company has to be registered for state unemployment and state withholding when they go into a state. Um, you know, those things are just commonplace. But, you know, again, you may or may not know how to do that. And one thing I will say, uh, since COVID, every state has kind of revamped their registration process. So it's become more electronic, but also in a way more cumbersome because you don't get a number right away. So you have to have, make sure you've assigned someone internally as your primary contact that's going to be very responsible about getting that information from the state when it gets to you and getting it to us. Otherwise, there's a lag between the information and all of a sudden you're trying, we're trying to file your state withholding forms and we don't have that ID number and they won't necessarily give it directly to us. So we can help with that process, but you have to have someone internally that's going to be that primary contact to, to make sure that data gets to us. Um, some of the other things you need to think about are um, workers' compensation. It's very important that you, um, you know, that, that you notify your workers' comp uh, carrier that you're going into that state if it's a new state, because some states actually require you to go onto their site and register and say, here's my workers' comp policy. And if you don't, they're going to reach out to you and say, either do this or you're going to be fined. So you need to think about those things when you're going into a state for sure. Okay. Perfect. 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 So um, what types of registrations are necessary during the acquisition or sale of properties? Um, some of the things I just mentioned, but another one that you want to think about is a business license. Um, and something that I've seen clients get kind of messed up with is, is how they complete those business license forms. Mm -hmm. Um, the NAICS code is very important because if you pick, um, one that says you're a hotel, then that state is really going to have 
much more uh, uh, strong requirements for the things you have to file. And if you're not aware you have to file those and you're not going to do it and then you get fined. So you want to make sure you pick the NA NAICS code that is um, applicable to a management group as opposed to a, ho uh, a hotel. Um, that's one thing that's important. Um, workers comp is important because some states are actually monopolistic states. And what that means is you can't go to your workers comp company and buy a workers comp policy for that state. The state requires you to buy it through the state. So mm -hmm. if you don't know that and it comes a year later and all of a sudden you haven't been paying the workers comp to the, to the state, they're going to fine you again. So that's kind of also goes back to our team is aware, and I say our team, um, ANOVA in general, but also our HR outsourcing team, we try to have that communication with the client and say, are you aware that this is, is a monopolistic state, that you need to do this? Um, hopefully you're going to your workers' comp carrier and they're telling you this, but it doesn't always happen that way. No. True. Oh my goodness, I had no idea. <laughs> See, Thank it's the easy button. It's that. the easy button for you, but not for us, the right? The easy button, <laughs> absolutely. So, how does a Nova Payroll assist with um, these regulations to ensure compliance? Pam, you want to help? Sure, we can. We can help with a number of those applications for DOR, DOL type of forms, and we can, you know, again, help with the putting the application process through. And one of the things in dealing with these states, they've become much more challenging and slower to respond since COVID. But one of the pro tips that we could share is pick up the phone and call that state agency. I know they're trying to move everything online, but if you pick up the phone and get someone on the other side, it's just two people trying to get a job done. And there's some great people that are out there and they'll help you. And that's one of the things we do to help our customers is you just don't send an email and say, well, it's done. It's not good enough. Pick up the phone and make the call. And, and that's what we do for to help our customers. That's wonderful. Thank you for that. Um, so... Let's talk about unions. We have a lot of states uh, that do have uh, unionized uh, hotels. Uh, so what specific challenges do unions present when acquiring a property? Um, everything. Okay. <laughs> everything is more complicated when you have a union. What's most interesting about it is you really have two sets of employees and two sets of policies. Um, what we normally do with a union, um, a unionized um, property is we have them sign off on the same policies and procedures that every employee signs off on, but it really doesn't matter because what really matters is what the union agreement says. So you mm -hmm. may have a, a handbook, but if uh, your PTO policy is this, you still have to have a PTO policy set up for your union employees, which is probably completely different. So, uh, so you just want to make sure that you're aware of those contracts and how those things differ. And, uh, and you just want to make sure that you are, are adhering to those different policies and that your system, your technology is set up to appro appropriately deal with the policies and procedures assigned to this group of employees versus this group of employees. We've done a, a, a really good job in the past couple of years at ANOVA to create templates that are unionized uh, hotels because you want to make sure employees are flagged as union when they come on board, and that way the system knows how to assign the correct PTO policy to them, the benefit profiles, which onboarding checklists to assign. Otherwise, they're going to get the same stuff that the regular employees get, and it's really not correct. So, so those are just some of the things you need. You also need to remember that there are some intense reporting requirements for unions. Um, and again, uh, just because you know that there are those requirements doesn't mean your system is set up to handle those requirements. So you want to make sure that the specific fields are out there that can easily pull into those reports and make it easier for your, your team to, to manage those. And we also help with some of those reporting requirements if you need that. So what steps should companies take to address union-related issues during transition? You know, one of the most important things that I've seen happen um, every hotel has its own union, union representative. So you'll have the union that they're part of, and sometimes you have more than one union. And every mm -hmm. union has its own rep, and you want to make sure you get to know that rep because um, they're very relationship-driven. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have a problem with an employee or with a situation, if you know someone, that, like Tim said, about the about you know the reporting requirements, being able to make a phone call is much easier than sending an email or writing a letter and hoping that it all gets squared away. You want to make sure you have that relationship. And the other thing that I, I only became aware of a couple of years ago is there's always a union delegate on site. So it's either someone who's been appointed 
or someone who's been elected. And this is an employee of yours, but they're actually the liaison between the employees and the union representative. So you want to make sure you strengthen that relationship between the, the delegate and your team because you want them to be on your side when you're, you know, when you're going up against the union for whatever that is. So, and being, make, and making sure that you're aware of all the existing contracts that are out there. Um, you know, the, when, a, when a, it's called a, a collective bargaining agreement. So once they get a collective bargaining agreement in place, that's not set in stone because they change it probably every year. And every year they'll have an amendment that mm -hmm. increases the pay rates for different positions or increases the, the PTO policy. So you have to adhere to that. And they're not going to come back to you and say, you, you need to do this. It's up to you to make sure that you're adhering to that. So we can help with those, those processes as well. Brilliant. Brilliant. So let's shift gears. Uh, ANOVA's payroll um, role and assistance. Um, how does the how does the Nova payroll team support companies during the acquisition or sale of properties? That's a that's a great question. So there's a, a number of things that that we do. One, we have the integration uh, with M3. So those companies, when they come on, we're already integrated with the general ledger as well as a time management system. So those pieces are in place. So you don't have those silos of information that don't communicate with each other. We also have the people in place because we've partnered with M3 for so long. We have a deep bench of professionals in implementation, customer support, and consulting, all that know so well the hospitality of business that we can bring all that to bear because we know what property owners go through on a, on a daily basis. And then we have that capability. Some of it we talked about with with Mary's team and what they bring to the table. So it's a full suite of software. It's the support is necessary that may be due and all the other support items that can take those tactical items off your plate. So you can fo focus on the strategy like E-Verify, employment verification, benefits, all those type of items all can be integrated and automated in one system. That's awesome. Tim, you and I have sold a lot of deals together. We have. And we've yeah. made a lot of people's lives easier with our solutions. True. So can you provide an example of a successful transition <clears throat> that Anova Payroll facilitated? Uh, yes. Well, there's so many, but uh, we just started with a new company uh, last month. We started uh, running their payroll. Uh, the name of the company was brought to us by M3. That company was having some challenges with manual inputs and uh, payroll errors. So um, thanks for the introduction, uh, M3. And we went and saw what the company had set up. A lot of their errors revolved around entries into the general ledger and manual time entry. We were able to automate those processes with our API integrations with M3. Uh, that company has 108 locations now and 1,200 employees. They are now focused on how they're gonna grow the company and they're adding another 40 properties. And, Thanks for bringing us in. We were able to help out our mutual customer. Awesome. Awesome. So what differentiates Anova Payroll from other payroll service providers with handling property transactions? I think we, we hit some of those biggest ones. It's our, our knowledge of the hospitality business, our integrations with M3. Nobody else really has all those. And the capabilities that we bring to the table is, is really unmatched in the industry when we partner together with M3. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. So um, before we leave this topic, um, let me let me just kind of ask you, uh, what role does employee training play in ensuring a smooth transition and how can Anova Payroll help with this? Well, that's, a, that's another really important question. Whenever you're tra uh, changing systems, I know M3 takes that training so importantly when you're bringing on a new customer and we do the same. So we train all the administrators extensively in how the system works. And then we have training for the level below that. Think of the GM level and that level. And I'll tell you, often, oftentimes, if you're, when you tell your GMs that you're switching payroll providers in June, in July, you tell them in June, but you're going to do it in July, they'll, they, they wear a lot of hats. They'll okay. say, I'll take care of that in July, right? So um, we have additional trainings ready uh, for that when that day happens and the transitions made, and we have um, we have recordings that we put out, and a good um, best practice uh, for the property to have is either a phone number dedicated or an email 
that the property owner, the GMs can send, their employees can send questioning. Hey, I don't know how to put overtime on this person's uh, timesheet. I don't know how to approve this payroll. So you can address those right then and take care of them. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that we have plans and fail safes in place <laughs> because, you know, it, it's going to happen. And mm -hmm. we, I, when, I'm an old hotelier. So, you know, I always said training was my, was my thing because I always said we only run as well as our least trained employee. Mm -hmm. And so it was vital to me before, you know, an employee ever stepped out at that front desk or they ever, you know, attempted to do anything. I mean, they had minimum of 40 hours training because wow. I wanted them mm -hmm. to be prepared for anything. Mm -hmm. And I needed my hotels to run like a well-oiled machine. Mm -hmm. And they did. So, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, Team Inova, in closing, uh, what final advice would you give to companies planning to sell or acquire properties in terms of payroll and HR management? Well, you know, uh, Christy, one of the things that we haven't spoken about yet that uh, that I think is really important, and, and I can bring up a situation from uh, a mutual client that we work with uh, that, uh, that took over a property out in Colorado. Um, they, they brought their key contacts out there, their key people. Uh, the owner was there, their COO, their CFO, their HR director, and they had, they communicated with the employees. They had a, an interpreter. Um, they went through the policy differences. They went through um, their industry experience. They went through all the things that, that kind of helped build that relationship with the new employees. And, um, and they made sure our team was there so they knew who to go to when they had problems with HR, when they had problems with, with their payroll. Um, and just communicating with, with their people was so important. And it uh, really made that transition very smooth and, uh, and, and easy. So, uh, and I think that's what you want. You want the employees to feel like this is that you care about them and that their payroll is going to happen just like it happened before uh, or better. Um, so, uh, so I think that that communication is very important. Absolutely. I would 100% agree with that. Did you have anything to add to that, Tim? Yeah, sure. From the, from the payroll perspective and human capital management, bring in your provider as early as possible. It's not going to cost you anything extra to have them there at the table during due diligence, and they can really, really add uh, to your experience. Make sure you have all your government documents in place. They take much longer today than they used to, all your state documents, and your checking account that you're going to use uh, to pay your people. And uh, use M3, and it will be a better experience for your company. Thank you for that. I appreciate that endorsement. So, team? For our customers who are ready to hit the easy button, how do they get in touch with you? With you? you can just go to our website, which is inovapayroll.com. So I-N-O-V-A, payroll, all one word, dot com. Fill out the form and we'll get right back to you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I am sure after this uh, podcast that uh, that inbox is going to be totally full because you guys did a great job. And can't thank you all enough for being a fantastic partner. We appreciate you all. And thank you for coming in today. Thank Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you Enjoyed so much. It. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of M3 Minutes Podcast. Thank you so much to Tim and Mary of Anova Payroll for joining us today. And until next time, hoteliers, have a great day.